Okay, everybody, welcome. Igneous Rocks. Um, I am Mr. Gazda, and I'll be your host today. And uh, let's go through, let's start looking at some igneous rocks. Igneous rocks um, form from liquid rock. Also, we also use the phrase molten rock. And um, I think uh, think of lava, okay? And uh, as it cools, it's going to form different kinds of rocks. And one of the things that matters is the rate of cooling here. Let's look, let's, let's, let's look at this right here. This, and hopefully you get a good sense of what this is like. This is volcanic glass or obsidian, and you can really see see how it breaks very circularly. It's called conchoidal. Look at that, um, and everyone likes this. It's really shiny. This is volcanic glass. This is from lava that flows on the surface of Earth that cools very quickly. Uh, it cools so quickly that the um, they, there is no time for any crystals at all, mineral crystals to form, and uh, so you get this very cool volcanic glass. That is obsidian. And uh, let's get out the reference table here. Earth Science Reference Table, where do we see obsidian? Uh, obsidian is right here, and it usually appears black, and the texture here is glassy. And then you have another um, when lava that cools slowly also um, can be like this. And I'll put a, a penny in there just for scale. And this, if you see, a lot of little holes in there, and these are called um, vesicles. There's vesicular texture on this rock, and what this is, it looks very sponge-like. What this is, is from uh, lava that cools quickly, and there's a, always a lot of uh, gases, volcanic gases that's, uh, that's in lava. And um, this cools so quickly that, that, that those gases don't get a chance to escape, because the, the lava is always uh, you know, it's pretty thick material. Think of like, like a milkshake, so the gases uh, don't um, go through it very quickly. This cools so quickly that the uh, gas bubbles, um, the gases get stuck in there and form these gas pockets. Or vesicular texture, and this we're going to call uh, this is scoria, okay? And then this is another um, vesicular texture rock here. You can see it's probably a little bit vesicles are a little smaller, um, but it does stand out. It's going to have a low density of these rocks because there's a lot of open space, and uh, we'll call this something like you know vesicular basalt. So here we see uh, the scoria here on the reference table. Vesicular basalt, and the lighter color ones is pumice is very common, so it's a little bit lighter color, often like grayish vesicular rhyolite. And the texture here is in a vesicular texture, it even says gas pockets. Now all of these are um, extrusive, which means they form um, outside of Earth. They're volcanic. X means uh, that prefix means exterior, outside, so on Earth's surface. Now let's go to uh, rocks that uh, take a little bit longer to cool. Okay, these are still uh, on the surface of Earth, and if you look here, notice that this is light color, kind of pinkish color, and you can't see. See, it's going to focus on that. You can't see the minerals with the naked eye. Okay, it doesn't look like much, but there are minerals in there. Make it up. They're just really small. You need a microscope to really see them. Um, so this is going to be called fine texture. Okay, this rock right here is. Um, Rhyolite because it is a uh, light color. So all the all the rocks on this side of the chart are lighter color because they have light colored minerals in them, and all of the um, ones on this side of the chart are darker color. Now this is going to be fine grain texture. Now one thing I want to do is uh, you're seeing as we go down as, as it goes um, deeper inside Earth and takes longer to cool, the um, texture of it is different. So just we have some things like this. Glassy texture means it cools very quickly. You want to know that. Um, vesicular textures from trapped gases also cooled quickly. And now what we, and then we're getting into the larger the crystals, it's got, it will cool um, more slowly. So let's we'll, let's show you some examples of that. But before, let's go into this is one that uh, also is a fine grain texture. Okay, can't really see the minerals there. Another shot of it. And it's not really focusing. All right, you can't see any crystals. And what this is is also a um, fine grain texture. And this is basalt, okay? Because it's darker color. These are these are darker color. And basalt is what makes up the crust of the ocean floor. Okay, the ocean floor is ma mainly made of basalt. So now let's get into again as we're going down this list. As we go down this way, now we're getting into some intrusive rocks ones that cool inside Earth. And that molten rock, um, or it's called magma when it's under Earth, will take much longer to cool. Like basically, the heat can't escape from all the rock above. So the longer it takes to cool, 
the larger the crystals. Here is an example of granite. Okay, this is what the mainly what the continents are made of is granite. And now, hopefully, what you can see is that there are angular crystals that are interlocking. You can see them. You see the individual minerals here. Um, okay, there are some um, there are some white ones, and there are some darker color ones, and some colorless ones in there. Uh, they're in no pattern, but anytime you can see minerals with without a, you can see them like this with the naked eye, it's going to be fairly large crystals, and we're going to call that uh, coarse texture. Okay, coarse texture, and this is granite, and there's all different kinds of granite. This is mainly um, whitish minerals and colorless quartz, and and some like black minerals in there. Okay, what you're also going to see is other coarse grained rocks here and you're going to see that these are a little bit darker okay so you made a dark metal so you can kind of see it here I don't know if you can see it great or here uh, you, it's hard to see them because they are all similar in color but maybe you can see it better here okay again this is my penny for scale and this is nice as a piece of countertop that, that's been polished and you can see these are angular interlocking minerals and you can see the individual minerals um, here so this again is coarse texture um, cooled deep onto earth and again this is darker color what you're going to get now compared to uh, on this side you're going to see our our darker rocks over here I'll put this over here our darker rocks and then we have our lighter color rocks more on this side so this is our granite and this is like our gabbro coarse texture and you see darker color and then you're going to see, let me see if I can move this over. And then you have the lighter color on this side. So dark, light. Dark and dark on this side, light on this side. Okay? Let's go on. What we have here is, let's look at some granite. Now I have these countertop sections, which are going to be good. Now here you see some granite here, and it's flat and cut. You really can see. So angular crystals that are interlocking like a three-dimensional um, jigsaw puzzle and there's no pattern to them so you can see some of this like pinkish it looks more orangish but we call it pinkish potassium feldspar the colorless pieces here and here and here those are um, quartz the white is um, plagioclase feldspar and there's a lot of black minerals in here which are going to be um, horn blend and ma mainly horn blend you have to buy a tight in there too, which you can't really see. Um, again, look at how large these are. If I put my penny in there, this cooled slowly under Earth. Okay, under the surface of Earth, called the intrusive rock. Now, let me get another one. I'll put another one right next to it. Now, it all depends on what you start out with. Now, look at this one here. You, what you see here, uh, the difference between these two. This one on this side is going to have has less of the potassium feldspar, the pink, this has more of it. And also you see the pink minerals are, are quite, uh, the minerals are a bit larger here. This tells me that this took longer to cool than this. Now we're talking long time to cool, we're talking months, years, tens of years when I say long time to cool, so that's what I mean. Um, this can form deep under the surface when the lava doesn't, or the magma in this case, doesn't get out to the surface. Now I can go even um, one step up even more, I'll push these out of the way, I'll put them in there. This rock here, now you start seeing minerals that are really large, okay, really large minerals here. This has cool, look at this, this piece of potassium feldspar, it is just huge. It's huge, okay, that's huge. And, and here you see another one. Now this took a really, really long time to cool. We're talking tens of years to cool, uh, and that is we're gonna it's going to be on this rock on the reference table, pegmatite, okay? And the texture here is called very coarse, and basically it's minerals that are a centimeter more or larger. And um, so as you go from here, the texture changes from glassy to vesicular to fine grain where you can't see the minerals, larger grained as you go down, and then this is the largest grain pegmatite. So the one thing key to remember is large crystals means it cooled slowly. And the way that you can tell the color of these rocks, or how the, what the color helps you is that these, these light color igneous rocks have a lot of silicon and aluminum in it, and they're called felsic rocks. So, and they're on the left side of the reference table. The dark, if they have darker color, they have darker color minerals that often um, that have 
more iron and magnesium that make up those minerals, and that's called a mafic rock. Okay, that's also on the reference table. Uh, that is listed right. My copy is not great. Okay, felsic is here, so these are all white color, and mafic is here. These are all dark color, and uh, that's what I have. So, um, thanks for watching, and I hope that is a good intro to igneous rocks.